to live in the forest, uh, you, you have to be able to listen and speak other languages that are not yours as a human being. They start to almost to come from the land and to appear very distant and you hear them before you see them properly, you don't understand who is coming and they approach us very slowly. We think that for the spectators you have the time to also be invited to the film, to this world, to this ceremony. But it's the remains of the Perimetral Road, which was a road that almost uh, killed all of the Yanomami, that was uh, responsible for a great genocide of their people. It was very strong to see these people alive, strong, singing. All the film fits in that image. It's a synthesis of their story and many other indigenous people's story. Eric, it's uh, apart from our co-direction, he's also the photography director together with uh, Bernardo Machado. There is some sequences in the film that there was no one but me and Eric shooting and I was doing the focus and the sound because we were the one there and something was happening. For us it was more important to be there and present and receive what they were giving. The sound in the forest, the sound in their house, in their community house, it's completely different than uh, what we have here. When we are at the Watorik community, Watorik is a very special place because uh, there is no mining activities acting directly in this community. But you listen this, you listen this presence all the time through the radio, through stories that they are telling about another community, the plane that is all the time passing by, going to another uh, village. For us was also interest not to seek for the images of the mining destructions, but to make it present in the film through this sound that surrounds them. <laughs> 